Okay, so uh, just to clarify and just remind you, and I know that those of you who are doing the design degree at the moment are uh, well aware of this, you will have seen this uh, some time ago, but essentially uh, what we're looking for is to meet a demand from industry that, that we surveyed people from um, a couple of years ago, several years ago now, and uh, found that they're looking for creative design thinkers. Uh, they want adaptable employees, so not just specialists um, and people in traditional fields, but people who can add value across the organization, and that suggests people with a wide um, range of skills. Uh, they need to be entrepreneurial, thinking about the big picture as well as detail, and with some technical ability to follow through ideas. So not just dreamers, not just ideas, but also having uh, some technical skills to add to that. So the Bachelor of Product Design um, has three majors in it. Um, industrial Product Design, Applied Immersive Game Design. And uh, the third one uh, has, is currently called Chemical, Natural and Healthcare Product Formulation, but we've applied to simplify that somewhat to Chemical Formulation Design, because I think that actually is simpler and reflects the degree better. And we're looking for creative, inventive students, uh, pretty much people who have hands-on interests and want a practical type degree and uh, they're going to study design science engineering and business and when they graduate we hope that they will have retained those and expanded um, on their entrepreneurial skills uh, that they'll be science literate practical creative and multi-skilled so those of you who are in the design degree at the moment i'm hoping you're recognizing yourselves in there and that um you will actually see the value that you're getting across the, the all the, the three different majors of the degree and the proportion of those subjects that you're actually studying across there. Um, again, just to bring people up to speed, we have about 350 students right now, just over half of them doing industrial product design, um, about 20% doing applied immersive game design and the similar numbers doing chemical formulation design. About half of our students are from outside of Christchurch, uh, about 40% female. Um, we have uh, had some rapid expansion of our facilities. You'll see down in the bottom left image there, that's the original School of Product Design is lit up there with the colored building. And in the background, you can see the West Building. And we currently off occupy two floors on that building and we're looking forward next year. Um, I have an application in to expand into the fourth floor to make room for more um, space for people in the master's degree. And we have a range of different facilities, design studios, computer labs, um, workshops, virtual reality and augmented reality studios, uh, formulation laboratory, maker spaces and study spaces. Uh, we have about 15 academic staff and I'll show you those staff in a moment. Um, we are successful in research. We have a number of very um, productive research um, academics who have um, just continued to expand their career. And at the end of last year, we were awarded a $10 million um, research program to look at various aspects of applying 3D printing to, to some particular engineering structures. Uh, we already have some doctoral students, uh, PhD students, we have numerous international exchange students from around the world, and we have international visiting lecturers um, from time to time each year. So these are the academic staff. Um, the ones on the left hand side are our permanent continuing academic staff. Um, they represent all three of the degree majors in terms of their background expertise, and they come from all around the world. So we have people here re representing Sri Lanka, New Zealand, Scotland, the Netherlands, uh, the UK, um, Italy, Germany, the US, Iran, Thailand, um, and China. Uh, we have Erskine Fellows, they are teachers who come in each year and they would be contributing not only to the undergrad degree but also to the master's degree from time to time. Um, so this year we have Jörg Musig uh, from Germany, but of course the COVID situation did hamper us somewhat on that. So our other lecturer planned for this year wasn't able to come. Uh, we have some affiliated staff in the Human Interface Technology Lab, uh, further staff joining us and growing in that big $10 million research project. 
And of course, we have design practice teaching fellows who are people in industry who are there to bring some of their experience um, to students and help them with their design projects in particular, but also some other specialist topics. So those research profiles are what you might want to look at if you were uh, considering doing a master's degree. You would look at these continuing staff members over here on our web pages and click on their name and you should see um, a profile coming up for most of those staff and they will describe the sorts of areas of interest they have for research. Okay, so on to the master's degrees. We've got two new degrees um, coming up for 2021. Um, they work in parallel, they are related to each other, but um, they are different because we have a different um, incoming student and a different outgoing set of profiles. So the first one is the Master of Product Design, and that is designed for students who have a first degree in, in design, and they're looking for a deeper understanding of design practice. Uh, maybe being able to spend a bit more time working on a full-time project and um, working with slightly um, more specialized technical skills to back that up. The other one is the Master of Product Innovation. And that is for students who don't necessarily have a first degree in design and it helps them develop business ready ideas. And we're doing that in collaboration with the UC Center for Entrepreneurship. Uh, um, people with a first degree in design could equally do the Master of Product Innovation, but people who do not have a first degree in design can't do the Master of Product Design. We're assuming in the product design degree that people have already got the basics of design under, under their belt, uh, whereas people in product innovation may be those without that kind of design background, but who have some great ideas that they really want help with to develop into a business. So two degrees with two goals. Uh, the first one, Bachelor of Product Design, builds on the bachelor's degree in a design-rich discipline. It can lead to a, a PhD, so it is a research degree and it leads to the PhD if people want to take that up later. Uh, both the degrees are 180 points or one and a half years of study, essentially three semesters. Um, but there's a summer in there as well and most people continually work through their summer. Um, it involves uh, a 100 point, uh, 120 point thesis. That's a full year of full-time thesis with a design research focus. And I'll talk about when you do that thesis in a moment compared to when you do the talk courses. There are two compulsory talk courses in design, which I will describe in a moment, and then two further electives that you can take from a list that we offer in the School of Product Design, but you could also take any approved courses uh, from around the university. So any courses above four or 400 level or above. Um, the thesis in the Bachelor of Product Design is expected to be a research project. So it incorporates product conceptualization, design and prototyping, but it also has a review of literature and an idea of um, leading ed edge practice and the research knowledge in the, in the degree. So graduates of the M product design will have advanced knowledge of design research and practice. They'll be equipped to critically analyze design problems and devise innovative user-focused solutions for them and be experienced in developing product prototypes. The other degree, which is the Master of Product Innovation, builds on any bachelor's degree discipline, which could include design. It does not lead to the PhD, so it's not uh, intended to be heavily focused on research, but it's more about innovation hence the name. It's the same length and size, but it has a smaller project rather than a full year project. It has a 90 point uh, project. Um, and it has the same two compulsory talk courses in design. Uh, and then electives that can be taken in design or any approved courses. And it requires two talk courses in business because it is an innovation course uh, or degree. And very often we'll be looking at students who may come into that who may have studied, for instance, uh, science and not have done design or business. And we want to make sure that they have business skills. We know that those who have done a design course 
will usually have done some business, um, whether it's at Canterbury or another um, university, but particularly at Canterbury. So a key element of the Master of Product Innovation is uh, a significant experiential project in which students develop their ideas with the ultimate aim of generating new enterprises. And that's done under both academic supervision and industry and business mentorship. So the Centre for Entrepreneurship has a large network of um, investment people, entrepreneurs uh, and business people, and they will be involved in helping the students to grow their, their business ideas or make, do their planning so that they can bring something successfully out into the com commercial world. So it takes advantage of that extensive network, angel investors and successful student um, company startups. So there are two pathways, as I say, those with a design rich degree, uh, which could be engineering, um, or it could be a design degree, can do either of these two degrees. Those with any degree which is not design rich in its background um, would be limited to do the product innovation rather than the product design. Right, so I might just uh, pause there for a moment and um, allow people to ask questions. If anyone would like to ask a question at this stage, feel free to unmute before I go on. Dave, I see you're unmuted. Dave Petrie, did you want to ask a question or are you just still listening in? Uh, no question at this moment, thanks Conan. Okay, I'll just good. fix my setting. All right, good. All right, well, I'll carry on. So the, the standard pattern of enrollment, uh, there's a couple of ways in which you can do this. It's reasonably flexible. Uh, so starting with the Master of Product Design, um, you would do the two compulsory courses, Prod 601 and Prod 602 in the first semester. And you may well choose two electives in that first semester as well. And I will list those electives a little bit later. You'll be able to tell from the titles what some of them are about. Um, there is a link to this on the web, so you can actually read the full course descriptions. So you might well spend your first semester of the degree, starting in February, doing uh, a full-time study of four taught courses. And then midway through that first year, you would swap over and start doing your thesis. So you would have chosen a topic, uh, a type of product you want to develop and a supervisor, and you would then spend the next year or so um, going through and doing that design thesis for the rest of the time. So that's full time for a full year, which gives you a great experience in terms of starting from um, a, a concept idea and taking it right through to a written thesis and a, and a full um, prototype. Uh, if you're doing the Master of Product Innovation, um, you would again start in February and you would do the four courses as full time study. This, similar um, structure to the Master of Product Design. But you would also put in there two business courses. One is called the Master, uh, is for the Master of Business Innovation 673. And the other one is a marketing course uh, at 600 level. Now, if you have done extensive business in your background, then you can swap those two courses for other business courses. So these are the two that would be the standard pattern, but you could actually move and, and take different courses if you wish to do that. So that would take um, through in the second semester, or these, these six courses would go through the first and second semester, um, and you could stage them out as you like, and then you would do this smaller product innovation project at the end of that and finish at the same time as the Master of Product um, Design. Alternatively, here, just looking at the Master of Product Design in both cases here, here's that standard pattern um, that you could do. Um, but you could actually stage this out again, do those first two courses in the first semester, because they're only offered in the first semester. And then you might find electives in the second semester. 
And there's no reason you can't actually start working on your design project, your thesis right from the start. If you have a good idea of what it is you want to start developing, you could actually start doing that and working with your supervisor all the way through. And then you would essentially be finishing off in, semester, in, in year two by concentrating full time on that. So you can actually do half time um, taught courses and half time on your um, product design thesis. Um, that's particularly good if you've got something that would take you know, a, a year to 18 months and you really want to, to stretch it out and be working on this just at a low level most of the time and then finishing off some concentrated effort at the end. Um, if you were to come in in semester two, you can do that as well. And in that case, you would delay doing the, the two compulsory courses until the first semester in your second year of study. And you may well start with um, two electives if they're available in semester two and in parallel with your product design thesis. Or you could actually start full time on your thesis. Uh, again, that would require you to have a project in mind and a supervisor who's agreed to work with you. And you would work full time on that for a start and get it a really good kickoff. And then in the next two semesters, beginning of the next year and midway, uh, you'd be working half time on that thesis and then staging out those courses that way. So it's quite flexible and you can talk to us about pathways you could actually follow. Uh, Master of Product Innovation, similar kind of um, staging. Um, here, the, the way this is set out is I believe the um, marketing courses in the first semester and the innovation courses in the second semester. Uh, and so you would do the two compulsory courses in semester one, and then you would stage other things out and work in parallel on your project. <coughs> or you could stage it out in a different way and have a, a different pattern going through. So really very flexible on how you actually stage this thing out. You could even, for example, do a very small amount of work getting your project started in, your first, in the semester two. <clears throat> if you were coming in semester two instead of semester one, and then do talk courses all the way around it, and then you'd join up and then finally finish off with your project at the end. Okay, so any questions about that at this stage? All right, so if there's no questions at the moment, just feel free to interrupt any time. Um, the two compulsory courses, they're required for both degrees. <coughs> One is Prod 601, Design Critique and Research Methods, that's being coordinated by uh, uh, Dr. Bahare um, Shara. And this is really about research methods for design and design critique. And it's to increase the level of um, ability you have to, to critique a design. So if you are looking at critical inquiry and thinking in design, how do you know something is actually a good design or the best design or improved from an aesthetic point of view or from an environmental point of view or from a functional point of view? Uh, in terms of research methods, um, how do you actually do the academic research? How do you research the literature and refer to it and cite it? What's, what are the important sources of information that you need to actually define your design problem and figure out what research methodology you should be applying to it? And also, um, how do you know whether someone's already done this or not? And where do you go for that kind of information? So that actually prepares you to actually write your thesis and also helps you in terms of, of developing your design critique to a, a higher level. Um, the systems thinking for product design is a course that I'll be teaching and myself, and that is using a particular piece of software which builds up models of how systems behave. Um, there is no mathematical background required for this. It's not a mathematical course. Um, the software actually builds the mathematical equations in the background for doing this particular course and you don't actually end up having to do any of that maths. It's really driven by um, icons and graphical interfaces. Um, but you can do things like 
for example, figure out whether you're um, going to get um, an increasing supply for your, and demand type feedback loop um, in a particular type of um, product, commercial arena. Uh, you could look at consumer behaviors. So let me give you an example. Uh, for example, if you went into a shop um, about say three, four, five years ago into one of the telecom stores and you needed help with your cell phone, um, I found that those shops were rather um, poorly organized. You would go in, there's a crowd of people, there's busy um, shop workers in there and you don't know if they've even noticed you. And so after a while, a lot of people would get annoyed with that. They would lose their place in the queue and they would sort of turn on their heel and walk away. So that's a, um, an example of consumer behavior where actually they're not getting a good experience and they're leaving uh, because of that. So it's a system where the actual arrangement of the commercial shop is, is going to have a, a negative feedback on consumer experience. Now, uh, if you go in these days, you actually find you are greeted by a person whose only job is to greet and make sure you know that you've been noticed and they carry a wee clipboard and they assign you to a particular staff worker and they will keep you informed and actually you then have confidence that actually you're in the queue, you've been noticed and you're going to get the help as soon as that staff member becomes free. Well, that's a way of, of changing the whole system to improve the consumer experience and you get less people having a negative consumer experience and so you increase the, um, the, the revenue to the company because people are more likely to come back um, and go through the, the process. So these are the sorts of things you can model using systems thinking and you can apply that across products or systems or business models. So those two courses are compulsory for both. Um, of the degrees. For the Master of Product Innovation, there are two compulsory courses, one's in marketing and one's in innovation. Um, Foundations of Marketing is given, it's done at a 600 level though, it's, it's not at an undergraduate level, so it moves quite quickly. Um, but it may well be that you've done enough marketing. Um, it may well be that in your first degree you've ever done um, a, a full business degree like a Bachelor of Commerce or it may be that you've done a design degree that had uh, as many as three marketing courses and you feel you've done enough and all you have to do is come back and, and talk to us and, and you can swap that out for a different um, course that might be more valuable to you. Uh, the other course is the innovation course. This one is probably going to be valuable to most people because even if you've done a business degree you may not have done innovation um, and it help students um, look at innovation challenges faced by organizations. And it's very experiential. Um, so as I say, either of those courses, you can actually swap out for different uh, alternative 600 level business electives instead. And you just do that by consultation. Then looking at the elective courses, uh, these are grouped along the lines of our three majors in industrial product design, game design, and formulation design. Um, we do not endorse these particular um, degrees, so you don't get a major in any one of these things. When you do the Master of Product Design or the Master of Product Innovation, you simply get the straight degree. It doesn't have a major associated with it. Nevertheless, these do sort of align with the interests and the background of our staff. So you'll see there are four elective courses being offered um, in the area loosely associated with industrial product design. Design ethics, of course, goes across the whole lot. Uh, development of interdisciplinary practice and self is all about how you work as a designer and your professionalism. Bio-inspired design is more about uh, making things that are inspired by nature and then design and manufacture. So how things are actually manufactured in a modern sense. So I believe this one, design and manufacture, is being led by Barrow de Gast, uh, bio-inspired design by Tim Hoover, um, interdisciplinary practice and self by Tom Woods, and design ethics by Ewan Coots. Then we have down here three that are loosely associated with the game design. 
and we would expect people to have a background with computer or software engineering or game design. Um, games for Health and Wellbeing, being run by um, Simon Herman. Uh, immersive co Collaborative Play and Design, uh, being run, I think, by Tam Pian Son Boon. Uh, and then Gamification for Enterprises, which is being offered by two of the staff members plus um, members from the Human Interface Technology Lab. And then we've got two courses here which are associated with formulation design. So one is a course in fragrance design. The other one is advanced topics in cosmetic product formulation. Both of those would require some sort of background in chemistry uh, or in formulation. Now, you can, instead of any one of these or, or even both of them, you can actually swap out any approved course at 400 level or above in the university. So that means you could if you've got the right qualifications, take um, a psychology course or a uh, computer science course, mechanical engineering, environmental engineering, any of these things that you'd rather do than one of these, we can actually approve that um, just by coming along and talking to us. Okay, so this is really coming to the end. This is my last slide here. Um, we already have a PhD degree in product design that's already available and we have growing numbers of students in that area and that is a pathway that some students may want to go on to from the Master of Product Design. And from next year, of course, we have those two degrees, the MProd Design and the MProd Innovation. And I think you understand now, um, without me repeating, um, which kind of student would be suited uh, for either one of those two. All right, so um, with that, I think I will open the floor for any kind of questions that anyone has. You might have questions about um, your uh, background or what kind of topics you might want to take or um, any kinds of questions you might. If you do want to ask a question, don't forget to unmute yourself. Um, Colin, I have a question about uh, scholarships. Are you offering anything uh, like that? Hi, Bannon. Um, yeah, that's something I'm still working through with the PVC. Um, we recognise this is a new degree um, and we would like to promote it. Uh, and she was certainly um, supportive when we looked for scholarships to, to support the Bachelor of Product Design. So uh, I'll be talking with her about scholarships and we'll try and put something up and make those available if we can get them. All right, thanks. Yep, good. Right, any other questions? Well, if not, um, then uh, you can always email me later. I'm happy to take questions or um, Maybe in the second semester, if you're on campus, you can drop in and see me and you can talk about that. That would be fine. Um, and I guess the other thing you could do is if you just look up uh, on Google um, and search for the Master of Product Design at Canterbury or Master of Product Innovation, or if you can find your way around the website, then you can find your way uh, to us and you can um, look up those two degrees. You'll see the structure of them and you'll also see those um, courses with their full course descriptions as well. Okay, so with that, I think I will finish there. Um, feel free to leave the meeting now. Um, I notice we've had a couple more people join us just at this moment at 2.30, so it may well be that uh, some people would like to, to go through this again. So um, if you'd like to do that, um, maybe stick around or maybe if you open your participants pane you could put your hand up and uh, we'll see uh, how many people we have to do a second iteration of the talk. <laughs>